So let me, um, any key moves it forward. Okay, so I, I wanted to, uh, we've been engaging ideas collecting in his, uh, collected in his recent book, Trespasses, and I would like to close today by turning our attention to Masao's recently published book, This Is Not Here. Now, I wrote this out, which will help me keep it um, uh, quite short as well, because I wanted to make sure that I collected my thoughts well. Um, this is his only book of photography, although he spent years engaging with images before gathering these together into this publication. It's as wide-ranging as his written work, I believe, and moves across the senses of life, pointing us towards sites of critical inquiry and analysis and reminding us that art, at its best, is deeply ordinary. And that's in the very best sense of the term ordinary, which is something that Masao and I talked about frequently. Uh, Masao and I had many conversations about silence and absence and about voice and image, the effort to grasp what's behind a door or across a border or is out of focus or inaudible infuses this is not here. And this book inspires, delights, and disquiets many, including me. Um, the juxtaposition of children at play Cats at leisure, and trees in bloom with poverty and war and protest is as unsettling as Masao intended it to be. Uh, silence and absence are both shaped by power, something that Masao liked to talk about. Looking at borders and edges and boundaries is a way to open new spaces for critical analysis. Masao began his work at the intersection of Japan and the U.S. with As We Saw Them. I frequently assign this book to my undergraduates, and I find in recent years that a whole new generation of students who are now living in a world that is all intersections all the way through find it compelling. The covers of his book, This Is Not Here, bring together the Twin Towers and uh, Hiroshima in a challenge, as I see it, to any desire to let the art of photography escape the politics of our linked histories. The Pacific is both a border between the US and Japan, and it's the physical location of a war whose images are unevenly recorded and whose stories are unequally heard. I talked to Masao about his experience as a child of life during the Pacific War, and as those of you who know me no, I don't really study the war, and I'm not a historian, I'm an anthropologist. But with Masao, I talked about the war. Um, his reflections on the impossibility of conveying in words, even for someone as articulate as he, what was the grounded experience of war, drew us into a conversation about silence, meaning, and daily life, things I am interested in very deeply. And I still don't understand all that the experience of war does to those who survive it, but it seems to me that it made Masao impatient with anything that was not politically critical or respectful of ordinary people and daily life. Valor was less a part of that or any war than suffering, but daily life is more often missing from our visual images than battle, so we do not see what is most deeply felt. As Masao writes at the start of This Is Not Here, I quote from him, Nearly no one took pictures during World War II in Japan. And I find it just, uh, I, I find it moving and very consistent with what I knew of Masao, um, that he started his book with that. Given the archives of World War II in Japan, this statement itself is a powerful intervention in dominant representations of that war. Perhaps Masao's annoyance with the concept of the post-war in Japan was in part his critical insistence on veracity I'm not sure and probably need not be about that. But what I know is that I find myself engaging Masao's work and perspectives when I encounter daily life images of war and when I find forms of cultural activism in the Japanese communities I study. I want to insert just four images um, that are part of that engagement here. The Tokyo Sensei Shirio Senta is a very small place where scholars and volunteers and activists gather art 
photographs and daily life objects donated by residents to tell the story of the experience of World War II in Tokyo. I'm not sure uh, how sensitive I would have been when I discovered this small activist um, center in Tokyo had I not had these engaged conversations with Masao. They use paintings puppet plays and narratives told by elders who survived the war to convey something of the experience of the war to the public and especially to children and young people. Everything in the museum, this, this collection, is donated by neighbors. And artists, um, this one is by um, uh, Sanichi Onozawa. They have painted things and they show these to school children uh, to try to address the experience of war the experience that Masao talked so much about to me. Um, one middle school girl's comment on her visit uh, after the children come through, they, ask, they give them paper and ask them to write comments. One middle school girl's comment on her visit reads, I had heard about the way the war from my grandmother, but I never thought that war was so horrifying, so I was very surprised. And most of the hundreds of reflections collected at the center, they've been doing this since 1999, express a surprise. The children expre express surprise. They just didn't know. Younger children are asked to comment, and they give these same talks to elementary school kids on their visit, and a teacher or volunteer writes down what they say on origami animal faces. Um, and one of these, the one I have here, says that we have to look directly and clearly at things. Shikari miru. Uh, Few question teaching about politics of wars, we call it social studies, but many prefer to keep the suffering and the worst of the daily life experience of death and destruction out of sight. That erasure creates a crisis for any humanities education because it strips critical thought of its foundation in sensed meaning. Of course, one wonders just how much suffering should be shared with children, but when suffering hits whole communities, it does not spare them. The activists who operate this small center are aware that they're walking a fine line, but they're wholly committed to building truth and critical thinking through a focus on ordinary people and the sense of their lives. Political engagement's only possible if there's no cover-up. Um, Masao often said to me that there's no critical thinking in Japan, and I would say, I found some. And then he would say, where did you find that? And then we would talk about what I now know from Takeo I can call uh, the remaining humans in Japan, the remaining people, the rest are zombies, but there are some, and I, I try to find them. They're always small and maybe don't have a huge impact, but uh, they're the people, I think, that um, are Masao's allies. Uh, when Masao creates and selects images to direct our gaze to the invisible, he suggests that he is working to open the doors, this is quoted from his book, uh, the introduction, to open the doors of argumentation and analysis. Because in This Is Not Here, he speaks with photographs, with photographs, but at the same time against their own composure. He invites us to have a different kind of conversation. This invitation, while sometimes beautiful, is never neutral. Nothing Masao did or said was ever neutral. It is a demand to engage in what he calls a critical commitment. And in his introduction, he interprets his own title Within the borders of a photograph, all is self-enclosed. It has neither a beginning nor an ending. Let me repeat, it tells no story. It is not here. That is why photograph can be evidence, but never history. And I want to end with a few photographs from his book, over which I will not speak. I've arranged them in reverse order, because when I move through the book, it speaks to me in reverse order. My mind always begins with the Pacific Ocean, maybe because I was raised so close to it, and my mind moves towards the doors and the inquiries, many of which were influenced in one way or another by the work of Masao Miyoshi. And of course, in honor of Masao, I also think it's necessary to take something he did, turn it on its head, and disrupt the order he created. So there's, in whatever order, these anti-photographic images, as he called them, create a very demanding silence. And I want to show you just a few of them now uh, without speaking over them. <laughs> 